a tendency to think that a new date and a new year and a new decade ensures a new you. But the reality is it is not the ticking of a clock that brings about the transformative power. It is not as though God waited on a particular day and said, if you make it past this date to a new calendar date, I swear I'm going to bless you. No, no, it's not that simple. The truth of the matter is change does not come easy. Change does not come easy. Now, now, now this is going to be tough to hear because it is antithetical to what you are used to hearing. You're used to hearing spin around three times and God's going to break it. Five ways to have a great marriage and three ways to start your life over and, and eat this and you'll drop a hundred pounds and take this pill and you'll be back able to get into the dress you wore to the prom but the truth of the matter is a day of not eating at Wendy's doesn't constitute a diet and you're not going to be transformed easily or quickly it's very hard and you have to challenge yourself to discipline your mind to to just focus on what are the most important things that you need to do right now in the midst of it. Number one, to fortify yourself mentally and emotionally to develop a level of mental resilience because there's so many unexpected things every day. And when you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, many people are having mental breakdowns. Domestic violence has increased 40%. Suicide rate is up. And so it shows a state of mind that many people are facing as a result of the coronavirus. So focusing one's mind. We can't control the thoughts that come in our minds, but we can control the thoughts that we dwell on. Those who study trends in corporate America suggest that in order to change, not the building, you can change the building quickly, not the name, you can change the name legally and quite proficiently, but to change the culture of an organization is quite difficult. The invisible aesthetics and accoutrements that go along with an entity is difficult to change. So most experts suggest that one to three years at a minimum to change the culture of an organization. You can change the wallpaper. Changing the culture of a marriage is not easy. I have been doing marital counseling for 43 years and let me tell you something by the time you see most couples the culture of the marriage is so baked in that nobody will listen at anybody because everybody on both sides think they are right and yet they come for change and they walk away without change because change doesn't come because you come to my office. Change doesn't come because you took a diet pill. Change doesn't come because you lifted up a barbell for a week. Change doesn't come because you hired a new CEO. Change doesn't come because you changed the name of the entity. Change doesn't come because you dyed your gray hair blonde. Change doesn't come because you shave your head off and put on an earring. Real substantive change that changes you at the core is difficult to attain. If, if nothing ever prevented you from being the best version of yourself, nobody told you you were limited, you, you had never failed at anything, and you know you wouldn't fail going forward, what would you dream? How big would your dreams be? I know a couple things about New Year's Day, and I know a couple things about the New Year. One is it's going to go real fast. Number two is, it's a new chance, a new beginning. So I would encourage you today to set aside a few minutes, look at your life, make a couple of New Year's promises and resolutions to yourself, ones that have high ideals, ones that will make you better, and start this new beginning, this fresh start today on the right foot. Gratitude in advance is the most powerful and creative force in the universe. As you move into the new year, you pick one word to focus on. It's your family with business as you navigate throughout life. And my one word moving into 2021 is gratitude, right? Like the quote reads, be grateful for all things because all things have contributed to your advancement. Therefore, all things should be included 
in your gratitude, right? Wins and losses, opposition, adversity, challenges, right? Stages and phases, right? Lessons and blessings. And for most of us, 2020, it was a year of pain. It was a year of people look back on it like, man, I can't find nothing to be grateful for. But the ability to learn is a gift, even when pain is our teacher, right? And as we move into 2021, I think the thing that we must always be cognizant of is painful endings always lead to new beginnings. Don't allow the pull to pull you down. And where you just give up and let go and give up on your dream and your hope and your position and your posture and all of the things that God has done into your life and you fall into the abyss of your base nature and let it just drive you further and further down. Who knows how far down gravity would pull you if Earth were not in the way? How far down is down? We don't know. All we know is that there is a law that by nature pulls us down. And we have to fight to think up, to live up, to pray up, to walk up, to do the right thing, to forgive people, to be balanced, to, to discipline ourselves. It's an ongoing battle. But the battle is a blessing. But I want you to understand, I want to encourage somebody that's in the fight right now, that the fact that you're in the fight is a sign that you've been changed because you didn't used to fight it. I've been thinking about gratitude lately and why it's such an important and powerful state of awareness. When you have gratitude, you are holding on to a particular sort of awareness. It's a powerful and transformative awareness. And what's more is that you don't have to do anything to get it. You don't have to buy it or work for it. You just have to live it. I like something John F. Kennedy said once about gratitude. He said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter the words, but to live by them. But how do you do that? How do you live a life of gratitude when you are too busy trying to live? I have enough sense to be grateful when the big things happen. When the growth they found and took six days to test wasn't cancer after all. I have enough sense to be grateful when my bonus was a lot more than I thought it would be. The big things make us pause and reflect. Then we say, whew, thank goodness. But you forget about the small things. You forget how to live in gratitude for the small things. You forget about your warm house. Or if your house isn't warm, you forget about the fact that you have a roof over your head. And if you don't have a roof over your head, you forget about the fact that your heart is still beating. You forget about the people who make you laugh and who make you feel validated or loved. You know, hearing myself say that, these aren't really small things. They are things you take for granted so they become small and you stop noticing them. But some of us have lulled our desire to change to sleep and we are satisfied just to be stabilized. And when you are around people who see success merely as stability, it is quite frustrating because they resist the propensity to change and they will fight you off if you try to change because they think survival is success. But the reality is I'm the kind of person is I don't want to soak up sunshine, drink water and breathe air and stay the same way I was at 40 that I was at 20. I want I want to learn something. I want to grow somewhere. I want to increase in some area of my life. I want to be able to have quantifiable results that are proof to the fact that all the hell that I went through gave me a dividend of some sort that it accrued some interest that it meant something the things that I suffered that they propelled me somewhere that they catapulted me to the next level maybe it's just me maybe it's just me maybe it's the fact that I'm 62 and time becomes more important when you have less of it I resist people who waste my time <laughs> Yes, I resist you, I resist you, I resist you, I make war with you, I come against you. I would rather you waste my money than waste my time. I can get some more money, but I can't get some more time. Do not waste my time. 
But again, how do you live a life of gratitude? Maybe the question isn't how, but why. Why live a life of gratitude? I think the answer has to do with selfishness. See, I don't mean selfish with a small s. That's when you care about yourself at the expense of everyone else. No, I mean selfish with a big s. That's when you care about yourself so deeply that your care extends to everyone else. Put yourself first. Give yourself an advantage. How do you feel? If I said you could feel revivified and empowered, you would want more of it. Remember, you're being selfish. So if I said you could feel more connected and more compassionate, you would want more of it. You want more of it because gratitude is another expression of love. How do you feel when you are grateful? You feel like you are not going through life alone. You feel as though someone or somebody is with you. You feel connected to something other than you. You feel cared about. And when you feel cared about, you care about. Don't just think about it, be about it. Gratitude isn't just about thank you, it's not the word. It's not just about the feeling. Gratitude is about living the feeling. Live the life of gratitude.